What's up guys, Gary here with self.dev. Today we are doing another LinkedIn assessment for you. We are doing the react.js assessment. I did this three months ago, but failed it. I've been learning a lot more React since then, so hopefully we pass it this time, but I'm probably not gonna pass it. I'm just assuming that. Uh, so this is for educational purposes only. You're gonna get different questions when you take this. They have like a test bank they pull questions from. And uh, I think that's about it. So let's do this. All right, when using Webpack, why would you need to use a loader to put together the, mm, okay, to put together physical file folders to load external data, to load external data, pretty sure that's it, to load the website into everyone's phone, uh, I don't think that's it, no, to process files, that's what Webpack does, I think, isn't it? I'm pretty sure it's to load external data, so we're gonna go with that. How would you fix the syntax error that results from running this code. All right, const person equals params arrow function, first first name, last last name, console log person, Jill Wilson. All right, wrap the object in parentheses, call the function from another file, replace the object with an array, or add a return statement before the first curly brace. So arrow functions have like an implicit return, so you don't need that, don't think. Uh, replace the object with an array. That doesn't sound right. Call the function from another file. That wouldn't really change anything. Uh, wrap the object in parentheses. I think that's it. Because I think you need the parentheses to say that, hey, this goes to multiple lines if you're just returning an object. So we're gonna go with that one. All right, which of these terms commonly describes React applications? Declarative, integrated, closed, imperative. I wanna say declarative just because that Right off the bat, that's the one I wanna go with, but we're gonna ask Google here, uh, which of these terms commonly describes React applications? So what would we search for for that? Uh, let's try terms that commonly describe React applications. Uh, single page, yeah, see, that's what I was looking for. But they don't have that, uh, let's see. Maybe we can just search for these. Let's try declare, nope. Impair, nope. What else was there? Closed, integrated. Closed. Interesting. All right. Commonly describes, I can't figure out a good way to Google this, so we're just gonna go with declarative. Actually, I don't think that's it. I think it's closed or integrated. The longer I look at this question, the more I wanna go with integrated. Yeah, we'll go with integrated. No, declarative. Ah, all right. Anyway, which attribute do you use to replace inner HTML in the browser DOM? In React, we use dangerously set inner HTML. It's a fun little property name, right? All right, what can you use to handle code splitting? I don't think I've had to do that before. Uh, let's see, React, how to handle code splitting. Bundling, let's search for split. Code splitting is a feature supported by bundles like Webpack, Rollup, Browserify, which can create multiple bundles that can be dynamically loaded at runtime. Code splitting, uh, but how do we do code splitting? There we go, all right. Okay, that's bundling. How much time we got left, 40 seconds? All right, react.split is what I wanna go with right now, because actually, react.split, no, react.lazy and suspended or not yet available for server-side rendering. Uh, Set dynamically imports. Let's try memo. Fallback. Lazy's the only one that's here, actually. So I think we're gonna go with lazy, right? Splits. Yeah, we're gonna go with lazy. All right. To create and to create a constant in JavaScript, which keyword do you use? Const. How do you describe? How do you destructure the properties that are sent to a, to the dish component? Uh, let's see. Okay, so in this one right here, you're not like you're not destructuring it, right? I think this would give you an error. The last one there. Um, this one, you're spreading the props, so that could be it, I think. Uh, this one, it's one of these three. Ah, I'm not sure which one. React destructure props. Boom. Okay, it's uh, no, it's the object one. Yeah, so I think it's this one. 
We're gonna go with that. All right. What do you call a React component that catches JavaScript errors anywhere in the child component tree? An error catcher? Or no, error boundaries. Yeah. So you basically have like your error boundary and then you have all the children component inside of it. So if any of those children components have an error, it like bubbles up and the error boundary catches it and it'll throw out the error. In which lifecycle method do you make requests for data in a class component? I don't use, I haven't used class components that much. I just use use effect now for the function components. It's not constructor. Uh, is it component did mount, component will receive props, or component will mount? Which lifecycle method do you make requests for data in a class component? Component did mount would mean it's there already. So if you're doing something where it like pulls in data from Twitter, let's just see, react pull data from in class. Oh, we got 20 seconds. All right, component did mount since will mount. Oh, there's an argument. Okay, I think it's component did mount. We're almost out of time, so we're gonna go with that. All right, React components are composed to create a user interface. How are components, wait, React components are composed to create a user interface. How are components composed? I don't understand the question, but by putting them in the same file, by nesting components with Webpack with code splitting. React components are composed to create user interface, to create a user interface. How are components composed? Components are composed of code. I don't, ah, hmm. By putting them in the same file, kind of, like you have all your components together eventually. By nesting components, that's a thing. With Webpack, I don't think it's Webpack or with code splitting. I think it's one of these top two right here. So, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Catch a tiger by the toe. I'm gonna go with this one. All right, by nesting components it is. Ah. Because I don't know what code splitting is. That could be a right answer. I'm just not 100% sure what code splitting is. I haven't learned about that yet. I've been doing courses on front-end masters. I've only done like one React course. I need to do more. So if I fail this, I'll do more React courses. I'm gonna do more React courses anyway, but I'll probably pass next time then. We're going with that. All right, all React components must act like a blank with respect to their props. Parent, uh, okay, higher order function, pure function, Madonnas, that is a word I've never seen in React before. Recursive functions, um, that, I don't think that would make sense. Pure functions or higher order functions? I'm pretty sure it's higher order functions. But let's just do pure function versus higher order function, JavaScript. That's not what I was looking for. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, 40 seconds left, what is a pure function? Oh, can't play that, it might be like copyright stuff. Uh, let's see, before we can tackle blah, 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 blah. None of this is helping me out. Peer functions give the same input, will always return the same output, produces no side effects. So I don't think it's pure fun function. Define side effects. I'm gonna go with higher order functions because we're almost out of time on that one. Anyway, uh, if you create a component called dish and render it to the DOM, what type of element would be rendered? Function, dish, return, h1, dom, render, dish, component, get element by d, root. Um, isn't this missing a, wait, no it's not, Never mind. It would be an h1, right? What type of element would be rendered if you create a component called dish and render it to the dom? This would be, a, like root would be a div, and then the h1 would go inside of that. There would not be a section or a component. I mean, a component's not like technically an HTML element. Section, section's nowhere in here. The div is what this root element is, so I'm pretty sure it's the h1. Yeah, anyway. Uh, what should the console read when the following code is run? Const blank blank animal. Console log animal cat. So I'm not sure if this is right, but this is how I think this is working. I think you're you're setting a const equal to three variables here, a uh, blank one, a blank one. So I'm pretty sure those will be like undefined or something like that. And then this third one's assigned to cat. So that's my thought process on that. Why might you use a ref to uh, 
refer to another JS file? No. To directly access a DOM node? I think that's it. To call a function, to bind the function. I'm pretty sure it's this, but let's see. React, why would you use a ref? Refs are function are a function provided to by the React DOM to access DOM elements. Hey, I got that right. To directly access a DOM node, uh, maybe not. And the React element that you might have created on your own, they are used in cases where we want to change the value of a child component without making use of props at all, and all. So I'm pretty sure it's to, to directly access a DOM node. Uh, why might you use use reducer over use state in a React component? When you need to manage more complex state in React, in an app, when you want to reduce, replace Redux, when you want to improve performance, when you want to break your production app. <laughs> um, I don't think it's this last one here. When you want to improve, I'm sure there's people watching and they're laughing and they're like, ah, he's the first one he rules out's it. Anyway, so if I get any of these questions wrong, let me know in the comments below because I want to learn and get better at this. So, just throwing that out there. I know I'm not like an expert or anything. I'm just doing this to help you learn what these assessments are like and educate stuff. Uh, what, when you need to manage more complex state in an app. When you want to replace Redux. Well, let's see, React, use, reduce, did I spell it wrong? Yeah, there we go. Hooks, API reference, uh, use, reducer, an alternative to use state accepts reducer and reduces the current state paired with a dispatch method. So if you're familiar with Redux, you already know how this works. Uh, we got 11 seconds. Ah, we're going to go with the one that says Redux because that's what this said. So view results. We passed. What's up? All right, sweet. So did better than last time. Uh, hopefully this helps you out. If you want to come, we've got a Discord. If you want to come join, talk tech, make some developer friends all over the world, it's in the description. I do web, de uh, I do resume reviews for web developers. My email's in the description. Shoot me a resume. It will be in a video. If you do though, uh, I'll just block out your contact contact information. So be cool with that. Um, there are ways you can support the channel in the description if you want to help out that way. And give me a thumbs up if this helps you out and you passed. And uh, also my links in, my LinkedIn is in the description if you want to connect on here and be friends. I think that's about it. So I will see you next time. Peace. Round one.